Hello, I am Seema and welcome to part 3 of the chapter Chemical Equilibrium. In part 2, I started explaining equilibria in physical processes and I explained to you the equilibria that occur when phase transformations, that is the change in the state of a substance takes place. Moving ahead with our study of equilibrium in physical processes, I will now in this video discuss the equilibrium when you dissolve substances in liquids. So there are two states that you could dissolve in liquids. You could dissolve a solid in a liquid or you could dissolve a gas in a liquid. And let us study the equilibria that establish when this happens. The first is the dissolution of solids in liquids. You know, I have this glass of water, a little bit of water in it. And if I add some salt, some sugar to this, I'm adding a spoonful of sugar to this and I dissolve it. At this temperature, whatever the temperature is of water is, the sugar dissolves in the water on a little stirring. And I have not taken a lot of water because I want to prepare a saturated solution. We observe that it's now, this is almost dissolved, you know, one spoon has almost dissolved in it. If I add instead more spoons, let us say I add two, three. Now I've added three spoonfuls of sugar in that little water, which is about a little more, a one third of this glass. And I try to dissolve it. Now at this temperature, I find the three spoons are finding it difficult to dissolve in this water. Do you see the clarity of the liquid, the solution is less now, yet it is pretty clear. If I add, let's say, another two teaspoonfuls, one, two, and now I try to dissolve it. Even if I keep trying, I'm unable to dissolve the sugar completely. And I find when I stop, do you see, the solution is no longer clear. And if I leave it for a while, I find that some of the sugar crystals, they would settle down at the bottom and they would remain undissolved. At this point, we say that our solution is saturated. When some of the solute, it's, it does not dissolve. And if you really see, if you can see in the bottom here, yeah. Do you see? There is some sugar which is settled down in the bottom. It's not very clear in the video because when I shook it, I actually shook the, yeah, if I, let me shake it more. Can you see the particles moving around here? Uh, well, what I want to tell you is that a stage will come when I'll not be able to add any more sugar to this liquid and no more is going to dissolve in the water. At that point, we say that the solution is saturated. Saturated means it is full no more of the solute can be added to the solvent. At that time, we say a solution is saturated. So now we understand what a saturated solution is. I have made this glass, the same glass here that I used with a saturated solution. And I've shown you these little particles of sugar which have settled down at the bottom because they could not dissolve in the water. My glass is a little wonky, you know, my diagram making skills are slight, not too good, but I'm sure you'll be able to understand the chemistry behind this. So now we have, you've understood what a saturated solution is. You have a sugar solution and when this situation occurs that a saturated solution has been formed, what do we find? We find that an equilibrium establishes between the liquid solution, that is the sugar solution, with the solid sugar which has settled down in the bottom. What does this mean? It means that constantly the molecules which are present in the crystals of sugar, they are leaving the crystal and joining the solution to form the solution. At the same time, a same number of sugar molecules are going and settling back and forming the crystals of sugar at the bottom. So two opposing processes are taking place. That is the dissolution. The dissolution of sugar is occurring and the crystalline 
crystallization of the sugar from the sugar solution is also occurring. The two opposing processes are occurring simultaneously and at that point where the rates of both the reactions become equal, at that point equilibrium will be established. And the mass, if now you calculate the mass of the undissolved, you strain it and find out the mass of the undissolved sugar and the dissolved solution, it will remain constant. Put it back in and keep waiting and wait for after a while again, weigh them, they will be the same mass. So we find that the masses of both the solvent and the solute, they become constant at equilibrium. So this is where we find that uh, an equilibrium exists when you have when you dissolve solids in liquids. How can you identify? How can you see this equilibrium actually? Is there a, an, a way that we could find evidence of this? What do we do? We take a little sugar with some radioactive carbon in it or we add some, yes, we add a little radioactive sugar to this sample. And it's a saturated solution I already have and I take a pinch of radioactive sugar and I add to it. When I add this pinch of radioactive sugar which I've already weighed and I know the mass of the sugar that is undissolved. Now when I add this, after a little while what do I observe? If there was no equilibrium, if the after saturation the molecules of sugar were not entering the solution, then whatever molecules of sugar were crystallized would remain crystallized. And Therefore, the, the radioactive sugar that you added should remain in the form of crystals and radioactive sugar, when you strain it, radioactive sugar should not be present in the solution. But when we strain it and we check both the samples of the undissolved sugar and the dissolved sugar, we find radioactive samples in both. We find that even the solution has become radioactive and the sugar of course you had added the undissolved sugar which was radioactive. So the radioactive sugar seems to be present in both the phases. So this proves that even if the solution was saturated, the sugar, there was a dynamic state, it was a state of equilibrium and a lot of action, opposing action was taking place at that point. So this was the equilibrium when you have dissolution of solids in liquids. Let us now study the equilibrium when you dissolve gases in liquids. Whenever you think of gases dissolved in liquids, the best example or the uh, common example is a soda bottle. You have sodas and all sodas, you've seen there's an empty space on top here. And how are sodas formed? How, what is the fizz in the soda? The fizz is actually dissolved carbon dioxide. Soda is because of the dissolved carbon dioxide in the, uh, in the whatever drink you have and that fizz is because of the dissolved carbon dioxide. So what is it? How is this carbon dioxide dissolved? If I just, I'm exhaling carbon dioxide and it's present in the room, what is happening to that carbon dioxide which I'm exhaling? It is just getting this to the pressure in the room is one atmospheric pressure it is just getting distributed to the surroundings if i have this glass of saturated water that i have here would it dissolve any excess would it be become soda because after all i'm exhaling carbon dioxide so this should turn into soda but that doesn't happen to convert this into soda i will have to use this liquid and i'll have to pressurize the carbon dioxide i'll have to force the carbon dioxide molecules to go into the liquid and when i pressurize it under pressure the gas is forced into the liquid and that forced liquid remains in the dissolved state so when you have a soda water bottle you this has been pressurized and the gas has been dissolved in the liquid and there is some of the carbon dioxide which remains undissolved here in the top. That space has been left because if more molecules come in, they should have enough space in the gaseous state to be present here. And it, it is sealed under that pressurized condition. And the moment you open the cap of a soda water bottle, we find that it, the, it gives out fizz. And let me just take an example take a bottle which has less soda because I'll have to drink, start drinking it then. So if I open the cap the, of the soda bottle, I find that the fizz, the fizz, it, uh, you can hear it fizzing the sound of the gas, which what will happen when I, the moment I open the lid, the gas here or the chamber which has no, um, 
which has no liquid here that comes in contact with the atmosphere and that also comes down to the pressure of one atmospheric pressure the pressure of the gas above this also becomes equal to one atmospheric pressure at that point the carbon dioxide which was dissolved inside the liquid it immediately its solubility decreases and it comes out and it rushes out and it comes out as the fizz that we hear let me just make the sound for you just for fun you know you hear the little fizz that came out yep and it's the same with a can of soda the can of soda if you hear the liquid there is empty space here also and if you open the can again the undissolved the carbon dioxide which was dissolved in the liquid it becomes undissolved and it immediately comes out in the form of fizz and if you leave a soda bottle so soda bottle open for some time we find that after a little while when you drink it the fizz is lost the fun of drinking the soda is lost why because all the carbon dioxide which was pressurized and forced to be dissolved in it it is lost to the surroundings and the drink becomes flat so what do we understand from this about equilibrium that when the soda bottle had carbon dioxide which was pressurized by pressurizing the solubility of the gas depended on the pressure the gas would not dissolve in the liquid at one atmospheric pressure but you could force the gas to dissolve in the liquid or more of the gas to dissolve in the liquid if you increased the pressure over the gas and if you force the gas molecules to go and enter the liquid they would then dissolve in the liquid so let us now study the dissolution of gases in liquids soda bottles it they lose their fizz on opening due to the difference in the solubility of carbon dioxide at different pressures at one atmospheric pressure the solubility is less therefore the gas escapes and that causes the loss in fizz and um, under pressure what happens under pressure you have an equilibrium at equilibrium the carbon dioxide which is present as a gas in this empty space above that is in equilibrium with the carbon dioxide which is dissolved inside the liquid and that is a dynamic equilibrium just as you had the sugar in the solution here this carbon dioxide which is dissolved is constantly in equilibrium with the gas which is present here that is carbon dioxide in the gaseous form which is present here so as many molecules of carbon dioxide which go back into the liquid and dissolve in the liquid almost the same number of molecules of carbon dioxide they are coming up in the form of gas and an equilibrium is established between the two and what governs this equilibrium what there is a law which is known as henry's law which governs or which uh, gives you a little idea about this equilibrium what does this law say the statement of this law is that the mass of a gas dissolved in a given mass of a solvent at any temperature is proportional to the pressure of the gas above the solvent if you go on pressurizing the molecules of the gas you're forcing them together they would enter the liquid and they would dissolve in the liquid so what does henry slaw say the more the pressure the more would be the mass of the gas that dissolves in a given mass of a solvent and what does the solubility of a gas depend on have you noticed that if um, uh, if the soda is at a warmer temperature it has less fizz and if it is at a colder temperature it retains the fizz for a longer time that's why we uh, sometimes add ice to it or we keep it chilled because we want the fizz to be retained so the fizz or the solubility of a gas is more at lower temperatures and is less at higher temperatures logically anyone would understand that at higher temperatures the molecules have higher energy and if they have more energy they would have a tendency to move upwards and escape from the liquid right so the solubility uh, the solubility of gases it decreases with increase in temperature so well this was all i had to tell you about the um, the equilibrium in physical processes that is in dissolution of uh, solids in liquids and dissolution of gases in liquids and i'll finish this video right here 
If you found it helpful, please give it a thumbs up, subscribe to my channel, recommend it to your friends and please, please keep returning for more videos in chemistry. Thank you for watching and bye-bye for now.